My name is Sean McCafferty. I am associated with Intor Technologies, Arizona Eye Consultants, the University of Arizona, and Abbott Medical Optics. I am presenting an evaluation of Goldman intraocular pressure measurement errors compared to true intracameral transducer pressure, both in vivo in live cataract surgery patients and in vitro in fresh human cadaver eyes. The purpose of the study is to evaluate Goldman applination tonometry errors from true intracameral intraocular pressure in general as a result of corneal biomechanical variations and as a result of ocular positional changes upright versus supine. Secondarily, we wanted to corroborate the in vivo human eye findings to fresh cadaver uh, human eye findings in in vitro studies. Finally, we wanted to validate previously published mathematical modeling and translational visual science and technology, which demonstrated a significant overall bias and corneal biomechanical as well as tear film error. It has been demonstrated over many decades, and even mentioned by Goldman 60 years ago, that several interocular pressure measurement errors are present. Those errors include corneal biomechanical errors of central corneal thickness and corneal rigidity, as well as corneal curvature, and separately the corneal tear film adhesion force. Very few studies have compared intracameral pressures in live human eyes, and none with a simultaneous transducer, transducer measured and modulated, modulating the intracameral pressure. Positional errors have been demonstrated, but also never in comparison to intracameral transducer pressure. We measured the intraocular pressure with a Goldman-type Perkins tonometer on 58 eyes under, undergoing cataract surgery in both the upright and supine positions. Simultaneously, we compared the pressure to bottle height modulated intracameral transducer pressure set sequentially at 10, 20, and 40 millimeters of mercury. Prior to the surgery, we measured central corneal thickness and corneal resistance factor using an ocular response analyzer. Finally, we corroborated our findings with 21 fresh cadaver eyes, again comparing to intracameral transducer pressure, modulated sequentially between 5 and 60 millimeters of mercury. We were able to demonstrate a significant underestimation of Goldman applination intraocular pressure measurement compared to to intracameral pressure in the 58 cataract surgery eyes of 5.2 plus or minus 1.6 millimeters of mercury over all pressure ranges. The blue line is equal intracameral pressure with a measured Goldman pressure. We demonstrate a significant increase in underestimation bias by 7.9 plus or minus 2.3 millimeters of mercury in the supine position. We were able to show a significant correlation in Goldman measured intraocular pressure uh, variation to central corneal thickness. Lower measured GAT IOP in thin corneas and higher in thick corneas. Correlations with central corneal, uh, central, uh, corneal resistance factor were not statistically significant. No attempt was made to correlate to corneal curvature. We ran con a concurrent study with 21 fresh human cadaver eyes, which demonstrated slightly less but still significant underestimation bias, which was significantly worse in the sup supine position. Central corneal thickness and corneal resistance factor correlations were not statistically significant. In conclusion, the Goldman type tonometer significantly underestimates intracameral intraocular pressure by more than 5 millimeters of mercury. Additionally, the underestimation is significantly more at almost 8 millimeters of mercury in the supine position. There are several studies which examined a direct comparison of supine and upright IOP measurements indicating equivalent or even higher pressures in the supine position. However, they did not compare to a modulated intracameral pressure, which is capable of negating venous and valsalva comp compensation in the supine position. The higher underestimation in the supine position stands to reason as the added force of the weight of the corneal button weighing down in the supine position will add the equivalent of 2 to 3 millimeters of mercury in downward force. 
We were able to verify prior publications demonstrating a slope CCT correlation similar to the Dresner correction. The question remains, why does Goldman underestimate the intracranial pressure? By thin-walled pressure vessel theory, in an infinitely thin membrane cornea, the invert thick law would apply exactly. Any increase in corneal thickness would only add force to the tonometer, creating an overestimation in intraocular pressure. We believe the discrepancy was demonstrated in our mathematical modeling published in Translational Vision and Science and Technology, which showed a central corneal buckling when the surface was apinated flat. Due to the buckling, the central cornea adds almost no appositional force to the tonometer prism face. Complete study details should be published later this year. Feel free to contact me with any questions at the above contact. Thank you for your time.